Hey, welcome again. Okay, so this is going to be the second part of the Docker recording. And in this part, we'll be covering Docker volumes and also the Docker file where we'll build a, a image and push it over to Docker Hub. Then play around with it. I hope you love the content also, just like the first one. Um, without further ado, let's get right into business. So talking about Docker volumes and bind mounts today. Docker volume um, basically isolates all content, code, data, everything that has to do with that container <clears throat> from our local file system. As you already know at this point, we've got a local file system, which would be whatever hosts, physical hosts, you are using the volume for Docker for creates that um, attraction or isolation from your physical file system in such a way that you've got that <clears throat> differences between what is for the container and what is your local file system. Although you could create persistence, which you're going to actually look at later, even if you delete the container, you still have that volume retained. But um, let's get into the talking about Docker volumes and bind mounts. <clears throat> this means that when you delete the container with Docker desktop or either you're doing um, that with your terminal, um, all content is deleted. Now that's the ideal state. If you delete the container without persistence uh, for that volume, you would lose the volume. Um, but we know in recent times, you usually want to delete the container but persist the volume so you can actually later in the future or other times spin up a new one and attach that volume to the new one so you can have data persistence. Again, that's something we'll touch on later. <clears throat> If there's a requirement to persist data that the container generates, we use volumes. That's the whole point here. Now, a volume is a location in your local file system managed by Docker. So we're going to see how we can create volumes and how we can also uh, make changes to volumes. Volume doesn't increase the size of the container using it. We should note that it doesn't increase the size of the container using it. The volumes content exists outside the life cycle of a given container. So like I mentioned, we can persist the content and the volume so it exists outside the life side circle of the container. Even if the container image is deleted or removed, we still have the volume retained. How about bind mounts? Now, when we use a bind mount, a file or directory on the host machine is mounted on the container. So we're, <coughs> we're excuse me, we're actually binding the system or directory on our local machine to the container. So it's more like shared which means if I drop something here, I can assess it within the container, as well as if I make changes within the container and write files on the volume, even if I delete the container, I should still be able to assess it on my local mount. Now we'll look at quickly how to use volumes. Uh, there are basically two ways to um, play with Docker the volumes. First is in the mounts, which is dash dash mount, or is in the dash V, which would be for the volume. Now I pretty much put out on uh, this short term um, detail about both of them. If I'm using the dash V, which is for the volume syntax, what it does is it combines all the options in one field separated by colon. We're going to see an example um, that later. Now, the first field is the path to the file or directory on the host machine. In this case would be <coughs> the physical machine where the, you're managing or administering Docker from. In case of bind mounts, or the name of the volume. So we can also do the name of the volume. The second field is the path where the file directory is mounted on the container. So we've got the local, then the container. Remember, we have um, the physical hosts, which has a file system structures. Then you've got a container. So the first field would be for the physical, a local. Then the second field would be for the container. The third field is optional. Again, it is comma separated list of options. You can use options like read only, read write, and those kind of stuff, which we're going to look at later. Now, if I'm doing the mounts, dash dash mount syntax, it's separated. Um, we have a key pair of values separated by comma. So it's going to be key pair, key, um, key value pair, sorry, key value pair separated by commas. Now the type of mount uh, which can be bind volume or the temp, as we've seen the temp file system here, the source of the mounts, then the destination as its value and path where the file directory is mounted to on a container. 
you know, for this story is talking. It makes sense when we get hands on and actually we're showing this for real. So we're going to pick up from where we left the last time. If you do remember, we still have um, these images. We deleted all containers, but we've got these images. We don't have no volume. So we've got Nginx, Alpine, and this box. We're going to be working with all three of these images. And also, if you don't have an account set up already at Docker Hub, I would advise you to set up one pretty easy. Just sign up, then you'd have that already in place. Um, then we'll be creating a repository here where we're going to push our image when we get to the point of building up a Docker image. But for now, let's talk about volumes. So I'm going to put this aside. Then we're going to be working off this. I'm also going to put this down. Then we'll bring up our terminal. There we go. Great. So um, we quickly clear all the screens. So we are starting from scratch. Now we're going to touch on two major examples. The first example, the assumption is we have three containers and they're mounted uh, sharing the same directory from a host machine. So in our host machine, we'll have a directory that all three containers will be sharing. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, so we're going to have a directory that all three containers will be sharing then we'll be using that directory and mounting it on these three different containers so first and first we're going to make a directory in this current directory mkdir again <coughs> make directory we'll call this docker bind uh mount okay so if i ls minus l you would see we've got a directory called docker bind mounts and by the way, I'll be doing um, a recording on bits admin at some point, but not at the moment. Uh, Docker bind mounts in this current directory. Okay, we're going to clear this. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create these three containers. And then um, all three containers will be sharing the same mount. Remember that directory which I just showed you. So we'll go Docker first to run the first one minus T minus D. We already know what these flags are this point then minus v is the new one we're introducing which is basically i talked about volume if you remember on the presentation I'll quickly bring that up here if i'm using the minus v i have to combine all the options in one field separated by a colon very important that we pay attention to that so going back to my terminal minus v so the mount i want to use what comes first would be as we again explain on the presentation, the directory on the host machine. So um, in this context, we have that directory created called Docker bind mount. So I'm mounting this directory, then a colon. Then where do I want to mount this on the container? I'm just going to put this on app um, log on the container. So first the local host machine, then separated by a colon, then I have the container. Then I can give it a name, like I talked about, then we'll also pass what image we want to use for this. I'm going to play with dummy characters here, just so we can actually have consistency in our recording. So we have this done, then we can move on to give it a name. Let's give this a name. We'll just call this guy, uh, maybe, let me look for three names that I can remember. So I'll be doing uh, John, I'll be doing Frank, and I'll be doing, I'm just writing on my notes. Then I'll be doing John. Okay, great. So we've got three names. So the first name will be John. John is the first guy here. Then we'll be using Busybox, which we already have here. So we'll go Busybox for John. Uh, I guess I may have made a mistake somewhere. Nay, I'm just going to cancel that. <clears throat> uh correct oh wow okay my bad i see my mistake oh <laughs> yeah yeah i get it Nate. it wants to force me to kind of like that csh for you okay great if i do a docker ps you see i've got um this guy john up and running with the container image uh container there if i go over here and check my container there is already john running we're going to repeat the same process, <coughs> but this time we're going to be doing for a different um, character. So we'll do Frank for the second one. 
oh man stop doing this to me <laughs> then we're gonna do a third one the third one would be joy also busy box or let's do alpine for joy we just want to showcase that we can actually use multiple images for this so i'm going to use alpine then joy would spin up a container in using the alpine image now we've covered all three images um Oh, damn you. Great. So, cover all three images. If I do my Docker, yes, we'll see all three containers. If I go over here, we should see all three containers unused. Oh, last image, my bad. Okay, then, great. We can see all three containers uh, quickly. I'm currently using these two images, but I'm not using this image. That's where the status is actually coming from. So, all three containers are up and running. Great. Now, that's the first thing we want to show. Uh, for all three of these containers, remember they are sharing the same volume, which is this volume here, docker bind mount, which we created. So ideally, if I write content into the directory, I should be able to see it in any of these containers. If I write content, not locally, I don't mean locally, because again, I'm not persisting this. This is within a docker space. So if I get in a container A and write the content, the container, um, b which would be in this case frank uh yeah frank should be able to see what was written by the guy john likewise joy so we're going to simulate this and see what it looks like in reality after a water break okay so we're back from our water break now i just thought within myself what, what if i want to showcase remember we had used the first option which is the volume syntax and it's going to be all in um, straight line separated by a column. What if I want to use the second option, which is the mount option? I'm going to have like a key value pair. Let's create one more container using the third option. So it's going to look like this. A second option, sorry, docker uh, run. In this case, I'll pass the minus T again, minus T detach. Then we're going to pass mounts. So we're using mounts. Now, if we're using mounts, it's going to be a key value pair. So type in this contents will be a bind. So we're using a bind volume. Uh, be sure that's correct. Then separated by a comma. Remember, we explained that by a comma. Then we're going to put the source. So the source is on the local. Where are we um, referencing to? So we're referencing Docker. It's trying to tap to complete bind mounts. Okay, then we have that. Then the target will be on the remote. So on the target, where are we mounting this? Or where do we want to mount this? Remember, the same directory is going to be the app log here so this is another option i can use this option then i can still pass in something like my um um, um what image i want to use and what name do i want to give this so um, if i want to do that i can still pass all that value here i'm just gonna i'm just gonna pass uh, a name let's give this um ben a fort guy ben then we're going to use image uh, box. Uh, I guess I may have made a mistake there. Uh, um, o U N T Docker response from the on invalid mount config invalid mount path. Oh man, I see. Uh, Docker bind mounts. So it's it's not record. Must be an absolute. Uh, okay, I guess this is my issue here. I'm gonna pretty much wrap this thing around, and um, oh, I can do something, I can break this here. Uh, let me see where is that. Then I can run this. Okay, I guess I'm still having the same error. Let me just bring up my notes and uh, copy this try to understand why i'm having that error paste this here okay uh break this down let's see um dock around minus t minus d that just mount that type is bind that looks fine then the source is a um, docker bind mount that exists locally the targets is app log then we actually this should work i'm going to try this again if it doesn't i'm not sure why exactly clear this screen paste this 
uh, Docker Invalid Reference Format. Maybe I just have to wrap this using quotes, but again, I'm going to skip this. I'll come to this after the end of the video. Okay, so going back to, uh, we have all three of them. We'll work with all three of them for now. After the end of this, I will touch and just resolve this before I move on to building Docker image. So now we're going to get into each of these containers and try to simulate <clears throat> what we want to simulate here. Docker PS for easy accessibility. I can grab the container image and just connect to them. I can connect using the names. So let's try to exec. Um, uh, let's open up a shell on each of these. I'm going to clear this first. I'll split this as well so it's easy for me to. <clears throat> four of them here. CD. I think that's download. I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay, great so let's start the first one here so the first one would be the first uh the first guy is john so not joy so john is the first guy so let's start the first container docker z so again we're using the i to interactive we want to get in so the first guy remember we say we want to get in the first guy the first guy is john so we want to get in john now we want to start a shell in john we're in john so if i ls here if i go if i ls on app you will see i've got the log directory app log so that's the directory we've, back, we've actually we created that mount on the volume to our from our local to this and this is actually referencing that in the virtualized environment in the uh, containerized environment which is actually in this particular image uh, the container um, that we have running here I'll clear the screen. I will get in the second guy here. The second guy here is actually um, Frank. So let's do a Docker exec again minus it. So we'll get in the second guy. The second guy is um, let's see um, Frank. We'll start a shell. So ls app. We have the log directory there. Then we'll get in the third guy. The third guy is um, Joy. Go, sorry. We'll start a shell here. LS on app. We also have log. Great. So now we're in all three of them. What we're going to do is we're going to try to create files and see if, if I create a file here. Can I see the files in here since they all share that mount which we pretty much had uh, binded, uh, the mount which we created and actually binded? We want to see uh, what happens if we write some files into one of container image uh the path let's see if the other guys can actually see this file this could simulate more like sharing resources or what you do like in a normal windows environment where you're creating a shared drive basically that's the concept here so let's try to simulate creating file um what do we do we can actually basically cut some content or echo some content into content and just play around here so let's start from this uh we're going to echo see okay nothing in here so we're going to echo uh this is us testing um this first guy is actually john so we're going to be testing saying okay great a uh, logs from um Okay, logs for John for testing. We'll write this file out. Oh man. Okay. We'll write this file out into um let's just drop it as a file name. We'll call it um John dot log. Great. If I go into app log here. I can see john.log if i cut john.log logs from john testing if i do the same here if i cut john.log again i can see that file what if i maybe write the data uh, just kind of like normal data file i can do a cool again i could just do like a touch create a new file tests doc dot um csv 
um, if I list here, I should see that file. If I list here, I should see the file. Basically, what I'm simulating is this guy carries out a right action into that drive of volume. Um, they can reach it. Likewise, this guy, I can also touch um, like tests, uh, maybe walk id.png okay work id.png is there work id.png is there so basically what i'm trying to simulate here is if one makes an action as long as that drive is shared amongst all three of them um, because we had when we were creating those uh containers we had mounted same drive it means whatever one does the others would see it now um if we look closely we would see that basically this is simulating a shared drive like in a windows environment where uh, multiple pieces share a drive you can move files from one to another once you drop it in that file anywhere you go to as long as that pc has got access to that drive you can also access that file you can copy that file you can edit that file let's show that we can edit the file how about this guy tries to write into john's log so let's echo maybe I, <coughs> I want to simulate the bad guy here i want to remove the logs remember the contents in uh john.log is logs from john so i'm the bad guy i want to erase my track i want to just remove this again i'm not the bad guy i'm just saying i'm the bad guy here so let's say i want to echo i would write into not appending but completely removing so I'll echo this is hacker then i'm going to what i'm going to do is i'm not going to append i'm going to write it straight into that john uh my bad <laughs> okay write this into john dot log again if this guy comes back here and wants to read his logs if he cuts his logs oh no my logs are gone i'm a hacker basically what that means is that um they all have read writes and they can modify if you look into the file structure for this file read writes is granted for all who can actually basically belong to this shared drive and they all belong to the shared drive but we can see for these it's just read the global is read writes for specific group is actually read then for others it's just write so if someone who doesn't have access to this drive tries to want to write into this drive basically they shouldn't be able to do that from a security context so that's what we just <coughs> simulated here now since this is shared it means um, basically it makes sense to have this but from a security context do you think this would be a best option again we've seen cases for organizations where they've got shared drives and the people share resources people move stops back and forth uh like a sharepoint um drive everybody have access to it can actually move in stops or move out stops uh, um it makes sense to have a mechanism to monitor who is writing or who is reading or who is modifying you can actually strictly assign permissions to do this using capabilities basically we're not touching that at the moment great now um moving on from here what can we do we can see that um, basically this works as we've expected. But like I mentioned, uh, even though it works as expected, on the local, if I list the content of this bind mount, oh my bad, <laughs> if I list the content of this bind mount, I can't see anything. This is me not being in uh, that containerized environment. I do know that there are files, as we can see, but being outside this containerized environment since i'm not within that docker space again we talked about the abstraction these volumes are abstracted or this volume is abstracted although yes it's created off of this there's an abstraction i cannot see files that i'm actually writing here outside these containers very important for us to also pay attention to that so let's try to do one more thing let's try to maybe look into one of these containers uh, we have them up and running so we'll pick up john so let's do a docker inspect let's say we want to inspect john 
um we talked about networks yesterday so i'm going to go to the volume aspects uh mounts so you can clearly see that on the mounts the volume type is a volume the name is that again i showed you this locally the source points to here and data value docker volume this sits in docker then the destination is where we've actually mounted this on now we can mount this anywhere else within this uh if i see the back uh no, maybe just go back i could mount this anywhere else here it doesn't have to be an app i just used app as an example i could create a new directory here on the fly and just mount there again if i don't want to tap anything on the local very important to note that as well now we can also see the mode is the small letter z i showed you uh small letter z capital letter z and ro um again quick question what does this signify or what does this represent um i would leave that for maybe someone to put a comment yeah then we can also see read write is true i also explained this it means i can read and i can write now i can actually make changes to this so i only grant this guy like a read and i don't want him to write just to prevent this kind of action that the hacker guy just did by removing file a pretty much not a good one okay but you also know that if you grant him only read he's not able to create or write entries into that file pretty much restriction as well so very important to know that as well now the second example which we're going to touch before i shut down this video no, still have one more thing to do the second example we're going to touch would be for docker container with volumes we're going to create volume in this context so let's see what that looks like by creating volumes so we're going to be using the command docker create i'm going to clear the screen okay let's um do more like a docker volumes ls at the moment i don't have no volume so let's assume we want to create volume for um the user john and the user frank let's do a docker create then uh sorry docker volume we'll create a volume we'll call this um john volume then another one we'll call this frank volume now if i go back and list that command you would see i've got three volumes now initially i only had this one which was the local volume again these are also local volumes but this now i'm creating this ones uh this is the one we had locally which is being mounted on the images but we've created specific one for frank and specific one for john now what can we do with this again you can also do something like a docker uh volume ls or docker volume command or docker uh help command to see all the options available for volume so what can we do with these volumes we just created now we're going to try to build some cases okay so um what we're going to do next is we're going to inspect our volume let's look at this frank volume so we'll use the command docker inspect again we've used this command previously it's not pretty new docker volume so we're going to inspect frank volume now if you look at frank volume you would see the mount points is also valid docker again this is on my local machine volumes then i have the frank then we've got the data so what we're going to do next is we're going to create two new um containers and we're going to use this volume we just created which is a frank volume i'm going to exit this i'm also going to just exit this so i can use this terminal space i'll clear this i'll clear this so for the first one what we're going to do is first we're going to create i'm going to explain something the first one will be for gen the second one will be for joy now if you look at both commands and you will see <clears throat> i'm referencing the second option which you spoke about earlier that like i mentioned i'm going to showcase that so you would see what i'm doing basically i'm actually using the <coughs> key pair um the key um, value pair here we've got type volume source frank i'm using the frank volume which i know i've got locally as i showed you uh, within the docker space then i'm mounting this to the target app again not app log app like i explained also that you can mount this anywhere i'm also doing the same thing for joy and i'm using <clears throat> type volume then the source 
uh, here is also the francs volume both of them have francs volume so by default they should be able to share files amongst each other so let's get the first one i'm using the nginx this time around i'm not using the other images i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste this first one here and execute this so docker ts i've got a new container which we can see here gen container the entry point is also specified here then i'm also going to do um the second one which would be for joy i'm just going to execute that here great now if i go to my um docker desktop you would see i've got two new containers from nginx image they're both running then um, we can then try to connect to <coughs> these containers so first i'm going to do a docker inspect let's inspect the first one which is uh joy container here the second one my badge uh copy this and paste this here great if i go over to the volumes you will see that it's using frank volume like i explained and um, again this reference is to our local environment and we've got the data but frank's volume is what it's using as compared to the previous containers we showed um, um here we're using frank's volume we're not using that default volume we had that which we had created at the start my bad which is the docker bind mount if i do the same thing here i'm going to inspect um gen's container so docker inspect uh if i go to the mount you would also see that we're using frank's volume now let's try to connect to these containers then try to see what happens if we create files in this container so let's try to run like a command docker exec minus it so we're going to put the container name here my bad uh what's this first one i'm just gonna grab it from here no so we're going to use uh jane's container let me go back here so we're executing we're going to connect into gen's container um one second okay then we're going to execute a shell in here if i ls on this directory you see we've got the app in here app uh my bad ls minus al just to see if app is actually directory so we can see the into app and we have nothing here so we're going to be playing with that here we're going to run the docker exec then we're going to be connecting to um that's joy container we execute the shell here then we're also going to be playing around here so let's try to first create a file here so we're just going to do echo Okay, we're gonna write this. Hmm. What's happening here? <laughs> write this into okay, time.log, time.log, then we're going to simulate the hacker again. We're just going to echo um into tab.log oh my goodness I just cancel this uh yeah this is not a stable shell okay echo <laughs> look at that hmm whoa okay 
we're gonna write this into temp.log then if we come back here and cut the content of temp log you've been hacked again just me simulating um how we can still share these um volumes and um seeing that because they both use the same volume but what if i've created one of them using uh frank and the other one using john do you think i'll be able to share still probably leave your comment uh let us know but definitely i won't give you the answer i just leave a comment let me know will you be, still be able to share uh, um assess both of them if i use different volumes so at this point we're going to just exit this and then also exit this then we're going to actually exit this we're going to clean up our mess now we'll first clean up the volumes remember we've got um, we've got these volumes created we're going to delete our volumes now to delete our volumes uh if i do a uh, docker volume help I would see the options i've got one of them is rm i can remove one of them is prone i can remove unused local volumes or i can just remove one or more volumes again if you're using the rm you're completely removing it but you can as well prone if you've got volumes that is not in use maybe you've got three containers and then you've got five volumes two volumes are not being used you can prune them you can just remove the ones that are not being used okay so let's quickly simulate this we're going to remove all the volumes which we have created. Uh, I will do that over here, Docker. So I just need to pass the volume name, then it's going to remove the volume. So I've got uh, Frank Vol. Uh, okay, volume is in use. Uh, can I pass the F flag here? Obviously, the container is still running. So the normal idea state would be to first shut down the container. Then remove the volume because I've attached Frank's volume, but I didn't attach. Um, let's see, uh, John. So I should be able to remove John's volume. It's not attached to any container. Great. I'm just going to make it easy for myself. I will just shut down all these guys, pretty much cleaning up. Then I'll remove the volumes. But you can as well, um, like I explained, prune better still. Instead of just deleting one of these, I can prune, which means if the volume is not in use, it's going to pretty much remove it. So let's just clean up our mess. I will go to container. I will delete all these containers here. I can do that from the terminal, and I think I've shown that in the last uh, video. Uh, inspecting the logs. <laughs> okay, great. I don't need that. Uh, remove everything. Then as well, remove this. Now I've cleaned up myself back to volumes you still see i've got these two volumes right now um this was initially in use both of them were actually in use so but now they are no more in use i can delete them either from here or i can do the same from the command just to showcase that I'm going to delete this one from the command uh copy this and um, run that command again paste this here and it's gone so we've cleaned up all our volumes, no more volumes. Now, the final thing I want to touch on will be building a Docker image, then shipping this to um, Docker Hub. We can as well try to pull back that image and build something off that image. So what we're going to do, basically, we're going to create um, three critical files. The first one will be the Docker file, which is obviously where we'll be specifying the description and definition for the image. Then we're also going to be creating an app.py, a simple Flask application, Python Flask app. Um, then we're also going to define our requirement, the text file, where we're going to define the package dependency that we need. I'm going to clear this screen. I'm just clearing our screen uh, to make it easy for myself. All right, great. So in this directory, I still have got this. Remember, I removed the volume, but Quick question, can someone tell me why do I still have this here? I would wait for feedback on the chat. Okay, great. I'll uh, clear this. Uh, my bad. Yay, clear. Okay, so what we want to do is we'll touch, create the files. First is Docker file. Okay, Docker file, I can explain. Then app.py, a simple Python Flask app. Dot text. Okay, so um, requirements, my bad. All right, all three files created. Great. I probably would have uh, MKDIR just going to Docker mounts. You know what? Let me move 
all three files into Docker mount so I can uh, work his calling. <laughs> I gotta go to work. Uh, move all these three files into that folder called Docker mounts. So uh, in here, I've got my files. I can work from here. So great. So what we're going to do is we're going to make changes to this file. The first change we're going to do is we're going to create that simple Python Flask app. Now this app will be importing from Flask and using that to pretty much just push out. Hey, hello, this is me. I'm going to nano. Don't ask me why I'm using nano. App.py and I'm going to paste that in here. So from Flask imports flask then uh da, 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 specify app the route a definition hello just a new function there basically return hello docker then also allow this accessible on global great that looks good i'm going to save this exit this we're going to do the same thing for our recommender text so we're going to just echo um the only requirement here is actually flask not flash <laughs> flask into uh we'll write this out into requirement.txt if we catch requirement.txt we should have flask that's good to go then the docker file is where we're now going to specify how we want this image to be built using what and what again uh it's always good to check what python version you want to work with or specify what python version you want to work with you could do like a python uh uh i have python 3 okay python 3.11.6 or 116 great so i'm going to use python 3.11 or 3.11 my bad it's after a point so it shouldn't be pronounced 11 it should be 0.11 okay so we're going to um now write into our docker file what we're going to write in here i'm just going to quickly walk through this yeah we're using python 3.11 then um the working directory is actually app directory okay this is going to be a basic working directory then we're going to copy the python dependency remember uh we're bringing in requirement.txt which should be in the same directory if not you have to put the absolute path to where this file is uh, by defining that clearly there install any needed package basically we're just going to do a pip install pip install i should do a pip3 uh, it's fine uh i think i've got pip great so we'll do a pip install on um uh, recommend a text again i don't want no cache then we're going to copy bring in our app.py which is our flask app into this app directory in the in the image then we're going to expose port 5000 so what we're going to do is let's say we want to create a container of this port 5000 is exposed we can map port 5000 to port 80 or 8080 then we can hit port 8080 which will now push us over to 5000 where we'll find our flask app running then we're just going to build the app <coughs> run the app when the container launches by using the python app.py that's going to be the basic great now we've got these defined we're going to write this change we've got everything we need at this front what we need to do next is then build the image. So to build that image, you use a Docker build, then we'll specify the image, uh, what we want to call the image using a minus T. So we're just going to do like in here, Docker build minus T. Let's just call this a uh, flask. I'll attach my name, uh, flask. Uh, That's not my name anyways okay great then i'm pointing to the current directory where every file is it means if it's not in this current directory i have to point to where all those files are and i'm building my image from those files which will be docker file app and recommend the text now once this is done i will have an image and now <laughs> the next point will be for us to push that image over to docker hub now to do that we we'll need to create a repository while this is building i'm just going to go over to my browser and then i'm going to um create a repository if you've not signed up you can sign up once you sign up go to repository then create a repository i'm going to give this a name uh, again it's just a dummy repository so let's just call this 
blessed be, which is what I usually love to do. Uh, then we're going to put a short description. Okay, great. Now I'm going to make this public so I can actually have this accessible uh, by anybody. Uh, if I want to go private, it's going to be visible only to me. Again, great. Using zero of one private repository is very important. You want to know uh, it's I'm on I'm a free space, so don't blame me for that. Great. All right. So once we have all this done, we then need to be able to authenticate to our Docker Hub so we can actually push this over to our Docker Hub. I'm going to show how we can do that. We'll just tap the image, then we'll just move in from there. So I'm going to create this. You can see I've got this Docker push da 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 tag name. Great, let's go get our image tag. I'm going to just do that from here, CD into. Okay, we are good. Now we build your view your beauty details. Beauty details are actually present here. You can view beauty details. We have our image built already. What we're going to do is uh, clear the screen, Docker tag. So I'm tagging my image. Now the image we just built, if I push back this up, we give it a name. Flask Blessly. That's the image name. Now we want to tag this image. We need to be able to reference where we want to tag this into. If I go back to my browser, you would see it's in my username for Docker, then here, then the tag name. So I'm going to copy this, make it easy for myself. I'll put a space here. And paste this here then we'll give this uh maybe a version 2.1 i'm just fine with that again that could be anything it could be latest it could be anything i'm just using a 2.1 and once i have this tagged i can then run this uh, my bad no such image hmm. let me see Uh, da, 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 Flax Blazely, that's, it's got a tag latest. Oh, I see. Okay, so we're going to fix that actually. Quickly. I, I, I just love Flash, I guess, so much. The point that I'm beginning to use Flash instead of Flask. Okay, that's my bad there. Uh, okay. Great. So if I do um Docker image, let's hear again. So I've got um, this with the tag 2.1. That's the guy we're going to be pushing over to Docker Hub. Now that we've got our tagging done, we're going to log into our Docker. I do hope I remember my password. <laughs> okay, this is where I might have a problem. But if I can't remember it, I'll definitely just get a new one done. So let's authenticate to our Docker. Oh, that worked. I've done this before. Okay, if you haven't done this before, Basically, I think because I've got um, this guy authenticated already, so that's has been cached somewhere. Same. Cool. I hope so. Great. Then let's push uh, image, which is this guy with attack two point one over. So we need a Docker push again. This time around, I'm just going to copy it so I don't end up making that stupid mistake I made earlier. I'll copy this, paste this here. So we want to push this guy. Now we would specify the tag which defines is 2.1. That's the one we want to push. If I want to push multiple, I can as well do that here. If I run this, it's going to communicate with my Docker Hub and try to push this from my local to my remotes. And once that is done, it means anybody in the public can pull this guy back in and build something off it. Um, good. I don't know. Whoever pulls it and builds something, it's their business. If I go back here, and I refresh this page. I should have something available for people. Great. So I've got this 2.1 um, available for people to actually pull. And if you look at it, this is definitely what we defined. Uh, we can see the image layers and everything defined in here. Again, from a security context, you need to be sure there are no vulnerabilities um, on this image before you start pulling in to use it for something great so i've got my image in there now we're going to simulate one more thing before we close uh, we will try to pull this image back in and try to start up a container image container from this image quickly before we shut down this recording i'll clear the screen so i'll do a docker first let's delete 
the image locally. Uh, we'll go here, go back to my image. Uh, this guy here, I'll delete this. Great. I don't have it anymore there. Then I'll go back here and I'll do a Docker. Cool. We want to bring back that guy in and we know I still have the name here. I'm just going to copy this here. My bad. It's no more in there anyways. Then I'm going to pass in the tag, which is 2.1. So I want to pull this guy in. If I run this, it's going to connect to Docker and pull back this guy in. Now, if I clear the screen and run the command again, uh, too lazy. <laughs> I will see I just pulled this guy back in. It's got this came in like six minutes ago, created six minutes ago. Then uh, it's got a size of this. Great. Now, one final thing we're going to do is let's start a container from this image. We're going to clear the screen. Oh man, yes. Then we'll do a docker run. We'll pass minus t d together this time. We'll expose the port um, 8080 on 5000. Again, 5000 was what we exposed internally with a docker file. If you can remember that, if I go back here and cut the content of docker file, you see we exposed 5000 here so like i mentioned the port we want to hit this on locally the port that is actually exposed in the image then we're going to pass the name of the image the image name would be the exact image name that we have again we'll give this a name demo app then the image you want to build this demo app from or off would be this image Paste this here, then we'll put the tag 2.1. Uh, da, 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 da. We made a mistake, definitely made a mistake somewhere. I'm going to look at that again, I'm sure. Very much a stupid mistake. Uh, da, da, da. Docker run help, Docker invalid reference format. Okay, my bad. I made a stupid, silly mistake. Um, I didn't pass the minus P, I just put the minus. Great. So if I do a Docker PS, I have a new container. If I go to my Docker Hub, a Docker desktop, I've got a new container running here. And I can hit this publicly. Hello, Docker. It works as expected. Again, we already touched this from the start of the recording. Very important that that is clear. So um, to wrap this up, I just built a new container of the image which we created. Then I also had exposed that outside. Then we can hit the app. Now, this could be any app. Whatever app you have, you can do exactly the same thing. All you need to do as specifying is what the app should be here. You're bringing in that into, then you're also defining and installing all the requirements. It could be any app, either Java or Node or whatever the case may be in this context. Okay, I think this is the last point of the recording. I'm going to have to clean up on myself. <laughs> then um, be sure that I don't have any funny thing out there that I don't need to have out there. Go back to repositories. I've got this public and um, I'm going to remove this guy later. So to start with, I'll go to my Docker desktop. I will delete this container. Then I'm going to delete all the images, uh, free up space on my... PC. I don't need them anymore. Great. Thank you for your time and um, for hanging in here with me, um, watching me all around. I do hope you love the content and then um, please do like, subscribe and turn on the notification button. I think the next recording would be me doing a bit more uh, hands-on um, hacking stuff. I got a bit of strikes from YouTube about my hacking content, so I've pretty much uh, been very careful now. I'll be doing some bits admin. In fact, some living of the line uh, binary misuse, actually, you did a lot of them. Uh, bits admin, maybe start with bits admin, see how we can actually go from zero to like a uh, full fledged shell just by abusing bits admin locally. Also, maintaining persistence as well using bits admin. Uh, thank you for your patience, your time. And I'll see you in the next record and have a good day. Bye.